So unit one of the text uh, talks about classical republicanism and natural rights philosophy, which then I guess makes it reasonable to ask you, how do the rights contained in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights reflect the influence of classical republicanism and natural rights philosophy? Classical republicanism and natural rights philosophy find voice, both of them find voice in the, the Bill of Rights. If we think about classical republicanism as being more about the common good, and if we think about natural rights philosophy as being the rights that individuals have, we see a bit of a combination of the two. So in terms of natural, natural rights philosophy, we do think, for example, about certain rights of conscience that, that arguably ought to go with people no matter where they are. They are the unalienable rights that we're talking about in the Declaration, for example. When we think about classical republicanism and we think about rights for the common good or the way that we construct our rights as being consistent with the common good, that's how we, we argue we look at things like Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment that get at how our rights ought to be dealt with in the context of a government. So some of, them are, some of those rights are rights that come from us being who we are, and some of them come from the way we ought to structure rights to be consistent with the common good. And that can also get into how we may limit some of the rights and how we view their scope under the, under the, Bill, of, the Bill of Rights.